hold on to it. If can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I don't even know where to start. Is this past? This past, um, let's see, it was over a little over a year ago. I had a life-changing experience. I guess I'll start with the the things I did wrong first, and then we'll get to the good stuff. <laughs> um, I had a lot of. Well, I was diagnosed with bipolar years ago, and I'd like for you to know that there is no such thing as mental illness. I mean, there just is not. Um, it's a big lie from the devil, and. Um, and they just kept giving me medicine, and I thought, oh, well, this pill will work, or this, and then it never did. Of course it didn't work. Then I'd go back to the psychiatrist, and I started realizing that they didn't know what they were talking about either. I mean, because they say, well, we'll just increase this, and nothing ever worked. Um, so I finally gave up on that, and then I started reading all kinds of nutrition books. Um, because I was just so, I was tired. I didn't have control of my emotions. Um, uh, let's see. So anyway, I would turn to all kinds of herbs there for a while. I was like, kava, kava root, there's the answer. That, that'll calm me down. That'll give me um, rest and help me sleep at night. Only God can give us rest. And that's the bottom line. Um, I took Ambien, things like that. It, it doesn't work. It only works for a little while. I was tormented. I was tormented by a spirit of fear. Um, which fear is bothering? I mean, I usually don't have a problem with fear, but I, <laughs> right now, I guess. But um, all right, I command you, spirit of fear, to leave me now. So yeah, I read. I, I know everything. I can tell you everything about nutrition and herbs and all that. But that was a major waste of time. You know, I was even reading books on bipolar about an unquiet mind. You know, I read all these books. So my mind was not quiet because it wasn't, didn't understand that those thoughts were coming from the devil, all those bad negative thoughts. And so I would even go to the counselors and talk about thoughts that the devil was putting in my mind. I mean, what a waste. So now, if anything happens, I'm just like, no way. I'm not even going to go there. I've got, I've got God's peace, and I'm not letting it go for nothing. You know, the devil still tries to tempt me occasionally. Um... But my mind is like so, he's, it's been renewed. I mean, I had to listen to Battlefield of the Mind for about six months. Joyce Meyer's Battlefield of the Mind and, uh, and reading the Word. And that's just all I do. I mean, there's nothing on my TV except for Christian um, shows. I watch Creflo Dollar, It's Supernatural, Joseph Prince, Andrew Womack. I do not let anything bad come into my house or in my mind. I guard my mind because my mind was the devil's playground for a long time. It ruined my relationships. It ruined them. It ruined my chance to prosper and make something of my life. I mean, and it ruined my health eventually. I couldn't even hardly get out of bed for about three years. Um, yeah, I was exhausted, exhausted because I was trying to fight all this. I mean, everything that came in, I felt like I had to do something with it. Every thought. You know, this person doesn't like you. This person's trying to do this to you. What are you going to do about it? And then I'd lay awake worrying about what I was going to do about it. <laughs> I was exhausted, and I'm, like, majorly free and just so relieved. But I guess what, what changed me was, um, I don't know why I didn't understand. The Lord kept giving me clues. He... He would give me, like, I would have dreams of snakes, and that was the Lord trying to tell me, you're dealing with fear. And um, he brought several resources in my life. Um, Hagen, Kenneth Hagen, he, he writes on the believer's authority. Um, Hind's Feet on High Places is a book about much afraid. So he was just trying to let me know. But I actually had to see it for myself. Okay, so one night I was in there watching Twilight, I was thinking, boy, I sure wish I had energy, you know, to do that where I could run fast. And boy, I wish I had, I could be alive forever and have immortal, you know, immortality. It's like, we do. We're Christians. We do, you know. What are you going to do? Trade it for this? So here I am. I'm like drinking from the cup of demons. And then I'm like reading this book. I bought this book at Walmart because I always suspected it was something because I would read my Bible about, um, about 
casting out demons is in the Bible, and I always wondered. I knew the bipolar was that, but I didn't know. I never heard of deliverance ministry. And that changed me too, deliverance ministry. I just never heard. And also got up very angry at the church because I went here 13 years and you never said anything about the devil. I mean, you just didn't come out and say it. If you did, I missed it. But, you know, I'm just like, I was mad. I left the church for a while. And then, uh, then I went to that church and it was the wrong church. And the Lord gave me dreams that I was in a legalistic church. That's another story because I was trying to be righteous in my own righteousness instead of God's righteousness. I mean, you can't wash makeup off your face and wear a dress and be righteous. It's what's, it's, it's just free and it's, it's your heart. The, the Lord had to work on my heart. Um, I also know what a familiar spirit is. That is, for me, a familiar spirit was fear. I, I had a dream where the snake was like right at my heart and I guess Jesus, he was disguised. He looked kind of like a bum or something. He comes up to me and he said, can I help you with that? And I said, no, it might hurt if you pull it out. It might hurt. And I was using fear because I had been so rejected and hurt all my growing up. I mean, I was rejected. I didn't have a father. I mean, and I, the stepfather I had, he hated me. He even tried to drown me one time. And so... Um, I used fear to keep me from getting hurt. So I didn't form as close a relationship to my stepchildren as I should have because I was afraid they were going to hurt me. I, I didn't want people to hurt me. But that was the biggest lie ever because that was just the biggest lie. I mean, I, I, so finally I'm like, get away from me, fear. Let's get this. So I finally did in a dream, pull the snake off, and I was delivered. And um, it's wonderful. So perfect love cast out fear. I had to say over and over again, um, it is written, I do not have a spirit of fear, but I have a spirit of power, love, and of sound mind. You know, and I really, uh, somebody had given me that verse several, a couple of years back, even before I finally got woke up. You know, and I believed, I was like, you know, the Bible says I should have a sound mind. And that was just, I almost had enough information, but like I said, I actually had to see the spirit. So, I was watching Twilight, and then I bought this book, which I would not recommend this book. <laughs> it was Prayers That Rout Demons and Break Curses. And um, so I'm reading it, you know, I'm, I, I do believe, so I'm like trying to cast demons out. I hadn't really seen one, but I just kind of know. I'm like, I suspect that's what's going on with me. So I made them mad. You know, I made the demons mad. So if you got demons in your house and you pick up this book and you start reading it, Get ready, you know. And, and I mean, if you if you don't know who you are in Christ, I had to I had to know who I was in Christ and everything. But um, I got woke up where I could not speak, I couldn't move. It attacked me. I could feel. I couldn't see it, but it was this weight on my chest. I couldn't speak, but I called out to Jesus in my mind. Now I didn't call out to Buddha, and I didn't call out to. I'm telling you, Jesus is the only one. I mean, I knew to call out to Jesus. Jesus. And Jesus delivered me, and I've actually had to do that several times because the devil didn't want me to get free. I mean, he just did not want me to get free. You wouldn't believe the things that happen at night sometimes, the manifestations, because he did not want to let me go. But I wasn't afraid. I was like, I'm on to you now, buddy. You know, <laughs> no way. We're not going there. And so um, if you allow people to offend you even, it can cause a wound in your soul. And it's just, it can make you weak. You can't open the doors to the devil either. So I just try not to open any doors. And if I do open one, the Lord lets me know. He does. And then he also lets me know through dreams. Um, he gave me, he gives me dreams about if I need to repent, he gives me dreams to go to the bathroom. It's so funny. That one took me a while because I thought, does he want me to fast? And it's like, no, he wants you to rip. He wanted me to repent. And then, and then that's kind of aggravating because then you got to figure out what you've done wrong. It's like, Lord, I've gotten rid of everything bad thing out of my house. I don't do anything except for watch preachers. I mean, what could I possibly be doing, you know? But for me, it was that righteousness thing. And um, another important thing I had to tell you that I learned, I've always had terrible teeth problems. And uh, I heard this other girl describing this on It's Supernatural also that, I, my teeth were in bad shape because I was speaking so many negative things, and I was saying bad things about people. And so, 
there was somebody in the church that I even corrected, and they didn't take my correction, so I thought I could badmouth them. And so the Lord gave me a dream about that, and so then I finally realized, wait a minute, I repent. And not only do I repent, I actually get it now. You want me to love people. Even if, I mean, if they're doing wrong, it's not my job to judge yeah, at all. My job is just to love people. I mean, I was actually, I didn't realize I was doing that. And then the Lord, he, he um, gave me a gift then. Then I finally had a good dream. I didn't have to go to the bathroom. It was a dream where, here's you a gift. I was like, this is awesome. Um, the Lord has a sense of humor too, buddy, because one day I was telling Mark, I said, well, I think the Lord had to make women. He had to make, he had to kind of perfect his creation, and it's women. Because we know how to have a relationship with the Lord, and we seek after the Lord, and, you know, we're just really all relationship, and he, he just had to perfect it. And so then I had a dream that a log fell down on me, and then I realized it didn't land on me. It was like right in front of me. I realized, okay, get the log out of your eye. So I realized, you know, I need to work on my relationship. So if you have any, any, um, information about hearing the, the Lord's voice or being spirit-led or relationship stuff, you can give me some advice because I'm still learning. Um, and one more thing, just one more thing I want to add because the Lord told me to do this in a dream. Um, when, I, when all that first happened and I started reading over deliverance ministry, the great Bible study was like the best resource online. Um, I started, uh, I went to Abba's house because they have deliverance ministry there and they helped me out a whole lot. And at first they said, do you have any Freemasonry in your background? Any masonry? I said, not that I know of. And she said, well, you probably do because this country, a lot of the forefathers were, just, they, they were in the masonry. So let's just go ahead and renounce all that. So anyway, I, I did over, going back to when I first got delivered, I mean, I repented of everything I could think of. You know, I just went ahead and got it all out. Got, I, I wanted to get everything right with the Lord and get my heart right with the Lord. So I repented of everything I could think of. But we did, we renounced all the masonry vows because um, higher up, a lot of, me and Mark struggled with that. We were like, how in the world can people be involved in masonry, people that go to church that we love and they're Christian. Of course, now I did a lot of things. Yeah, I forgot to tell you, I, I turned to a lot of wrong things and didn't know it. And we just finally decided maybe they don't know. But the higher up you go in the masonry, they finally admit to you. They say that you're worshiping Lucifer. So I think they just don't know. So, yeah, so, um, but yeah, I, oh, well, one more thing. I'm sorry. One more thing. Um, it's funny, though, the things that I actually had faith in instead of having faith in Jesus and the promises, the Bible promises, you know, that little book that's got all these promises in it. We can believe every single one of these. But it's the funny, the things that I would believe before that. I would go to acupuncture and think that was going to help me. And, I mean, just the craziest things. Instead, now I'm like, I know who I can turn to and I can believe. So it's a different person. And I hope I covered everything. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> How long did I go? <laughs> Bible promise book. How long was it? Okay. Alrighty. Yes.